So today we are talking about 3-1 solving systems of equations. So this is not new to you. This is Algebra 1. There's some things that you maybe don't remember. Um, so like we're going to talk about consistent, inconsistent, dependent, independent. But other than that, it's stuff that you've done before. We're going to do substitution. We're going to do elimination. Super easy stuff. The only thing that can make it harder in Algebra 2 is that um, it could be like not as easy of an answer. So what I'm saying is like today, the answer might be 1 comma 2. But in Algebra 2, the answer is like 1 comma 2 and a half or like 1 comma 2.7 or something that you couldn't really guess. Does that make sense? In Algebra 1, they all turned out really nice and pretty. In Algebra 2, that may not be the case. You understand? Okay, so we're going to start by going through the notes on the first page, um, but I'm also going to give you the graphic um, examples on the back. So let's just look at the words first and then we'll go to the back in a second. So system of equations is two or more equations with the same variables. It's, I don't think that's new to you. It's you, you're going to graph two lines or more. Okay. And then solution, it's the answer, right? So for these, it's going to be the ordered pair that satisfies all equations. What that means is you're going to have like x comma y ordered pair in parentheses. Okay. But if you were to plug it back into both equations, it's going to work in both. That's what that means. Uh, you have consistent, which is system has at least one solution, so that could be more, right? You have inconsistent, the system has no solutions. What does that look like if you have no solutions? Show me on your arms. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, right? So it could look like this, it could look like this. So it's parallel lines. That's what that means. If they have no solution, they don't cross. It's parallel lines. Independent has exactly one solution. Dependent has infinitely many. And like I said, we're going to do it graphically in a second, okay? So you could solve it by a t-table. Typically in Algebra 2, I don't think I would use that. It's an option, but it's not the easiest one. You could do graphing again in this class. I don't know that that's what I would do either, but you can. And then algebraic is usually what we stick to. It's substitution and elimination that you'll probably remember once we start doing them, okay? So we're going to go to the back side and write a few things down. If you look up here really quickly, I wrote super big. You've got plenty of room for what we need here, okay? Um, if you guys need to leave, you can. Obviously, you can watch this later. I'll put it on YouTube tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do whatever you got to do before you go. Okay, so I'm going to start here with what kind of lines are these? Those are parallel. They're supposed to be, okay? So those are parallel lines. So what that means is they're inconsistent which means it was no solution. I'm not saying anything different than the front side. I'm just giving you a graph because some of you are more visual learners, okay? The next graph I'm going to show you has two lines intersecting somewhere. So obviously it doesn't matter what these lines look like. I don't care at all. They just need to cross each other. So my answer would actually be x comma y, okay? And then this is consistent and it's also independent. And what that means is, is that we had one solution. Again, same thing as the, excuse me, as the front. It's just um, a picture this time, okay? And then the last one, just graph any line. So this is where I graph the same line twice. Obviously, you can't tell if I graph the same line twice, right? So what that means is I graphed like x plus 2y equals 4 and like 2x plus 8 what did I say? X plus 2y equals 4. So 2x plus 4y equals 8. Do you guys understand mathematically that that's technically the same line? It just didn't look the same. So that's like what we would have. You'll have a, an example of that later. So this would be consistent as well. But this one is dependent, which means infinitely many solutions. Okay? This is the same thing, but some of you understand graphs better than words. So underneath that, we have a few things that are going to happen when we solve these. Um, sometimes what happens is the variables disappear. So if the variables disappear, what I mean by that is if the letters eliminate both of them, you end up with a number equals a number. If that happens, for example, like 2 equals 2, okay, is that true or false? Is 2 equal to 2? Yeah, that's true, right? So what that means is your answer is technically infinitely many solutions. If you get a number not equal to a number, like 2 equals 7, that's obviously not true, then you got no solution. This only happens if the variables go away, okay? So if the x and the y both go away, it's either infinitely many or it's no solution. Stop me if you're confused at all. 
I'm hoping that some of this is coming back to you by now, though. Okay. And then one more thing at the bottom. <clears throat> I Again, this is just people mess it up all the time, even though mathematically it should be pretty easy for you. It's just tips. If you're going to do elimination, opposite add, opposite add, opposite add. What I mean by that is if I have a 2 and a negative 2 and I want them to eliminate, I want them to make a 0, do I add to a negative 2 or do I subtract to a negative 2? What is 2 plus negative 2? 0, right? What's 2 minus negative 2? 2 minus negative 2. Positive 4, right? So not 0. So you see how they were the opposite sign? I added them. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? With elimination, if they're the opposite sign, the math that you need to do to make them eliminate or give you a 0 is addition. Okay? Same sign, subtract. Same sign, subtract. So what that means is, if I have a 2 and a 2, what do I do with them to get 0? Do I add or subtract them? You subtract them. Same sign, subtract. Same sign, subtract, right? What if I have a negative 2 and a negative 2? What do I do with them to get 0? What's negative 2 plus negative 2? Negative 4. That's not what I want, right? What's negative 2 minus negative 2? 0. So that's why I like to give you those examples because some people do it so quickly that they accidentally pick the wrong thing. You need to make sure they actually eliminate. Does that make sense to you? Are you guys kind of okay? All right. Does anyone still need that page? Okay, great. So let's go to the first question. Uh, graph this system and describe it as consistent independent, consistent dependent, or inconsistent. So number 11, I put on here to make it a bit bigger. They said graph it. They weren't asking us to solve or anything, so I do need you to graph it. If they say graph, I want you to graph, okay? Typically, whenever we graph something, what method do we usually use? Slope-intercept form, typically, right? Can you do x and y-intercepts or whatever else you might want to do? Sure, I don't care, but I'm going to do slope-intercept because that's what most of us choose to do, right? So on this top one, what do we want to get alone? The y, right? So what am I going to do? Add the 2x. So I get negative 3y equals 9 plus 2x. Is everybody okay? Right? Now what? Divide by negative 3. Excellent. Um, whenever you divide by a negative 3, a lot of you guys like to put one big division sign here and one negative 3 here. That's not wrong. It's totally fine. But I like to split it up like this, so I'm more likely to remember to reduce my fractions and stuff. So that's y equals negative 3 uh, what am I at? minus 2 thirds x. Since this is slope-intercept form, I'm going to be super proper and go ahead and put the x in the front. Do you guys get what I'm saying? You don't have to technically, I guess, since we're just kind of graphing it on our own. But it's really negative 2 thirds x minus 3 for the top one. Is anyone confused by that? Okay, so where do I start? Where do I start with my graph? Negative 3, where's that? Down 3. You go on the y-axis to negative 3, and then what? Sure, or down to right 3. Either way, it's the same answer, right? It's just a line, graph ooh, the best one that you can, okay? So that line is taken care of. Technically, we should go ahead and label it. Oops, that's a minus 3. Well, oopsie. Negative 2x minus 3y equals 9. Whenever you label them, it doesn't matter what you call it, but most of the time we label it the original um, just because we do. You can label it the y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 3, though, if you want to. But in algebra 2, you're going to have more than one line, and I kind of need to know which one's which. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so the second one, can you guys try to go ahead and put this one in slope-intercept for me? Can you try that without me? Go ahead and try it. We'll see what we get. Anybody have it yet, what do you think? Hmm? You what? So it's the same as negative two-thirds, right? Negative four over six is negative two-thirds. So you get the exact same answer. Do you guys notice that? You should get y equals negative two-thirds x minus three. Anybody not get it and need me to show you the work? Are you sure? So obviously I don't need to graph that line again. It's the same line. That's what I was trying to say earlier. They didn't look the same. When I first saw this, I didn't know they were the same. 
Does that make sense? But they are, okay? So the second part of the question was go ahead and identify them. So you either need to look at the words at the top or go to the graphs on the back and give me consistent independent, consistent dependent, or inconsistent. What do we have here? Consistent, mm -hmm. dependent, very good. Is anyone confused by that? Okay, great. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do a new page so we have more room. Um, X plus 5Y equals 3, and 3X minus 2Y equals negative 8. So this is the next problem you guys had on that front page. So it says solve each system by using substitution. Do I care how you solve anything ever? I don't care. You can do whatever you want. You can use elimination. You can use substitution. You can graph the thing. I don't care. But I'm going to show you that substitution probably is the quickest method here. Um, but you do whatever you want to do. Does everybody understand? Okay. So the reason substitution is the quickest here, there's a 1 as the coefficient on the x. If you ever have a 1 as a coefficient, it's going to be the quickest to do substitution. How quick is it going to be to get x alone? What's the only thing I have to do? Subtract the 5y, right? If I try to get any of the other ones alone, it would be a little bit harder and we'd probably end up with fractions, which most people try to avoid, right? So I'm going to get x alone. So I end up with x equals 3 minus 5y. Is everybody comfortable with that on the top one? What do I do with that? Plug it in. What's a fancy word for plug it in? <coughs> substitution, hence substitution method, right? So down here, instead of an x, this is how I do it. I go ahead and like do the setup. Instead of an x, what am I going to put? 3 minus 5y, excellent. Do you guys understand that? When you use substitution, get one letter alone somewhere and plug it into the other one. Okay? So let's do that together. Distribute with me. What do we get? Crickets? <laughs> 9 minus 15y minus 2y equals negative 8. Very good. Combine like terms. So 9 minus 17y equals negative 8. What do I do? You're going to subtract 9 and you get negative 17. Divide by negative 17 and y is 1. I don't circle that. If I circle it, I think I'm done and I'm obviously not because what am I still missing? I need the x, right? So I don't circle it, but I kind of like put a star by it or something. So <clears throat> what do you think we should do to find x? Substitute again right? So whenever we get y, I can plug it into the top one or the bottom one, it doesn't matter which one, and I try to get y. Technically, you could plug it in anywhere, like you could plug it into the one that we messed with, but I wouldn't because what if you did something wrong, then you're like super wrong. Do you see what I'm saying? So I always pick the original problem. You don't have to, that's not a rule, it's just what I do, okay? So what do you guys think looks easier, the top one or the bottom one? The top one looks easier to me, so I'm going to write down x plus 5y equals 3, and instead of a y, what do I put? A 1. So x plus 5 equals 3, so what's x? What? Negative 2, right? Be careful. So my final answer is an ordered pair in parentheses, x comma y, so what was x again? Negative 2 comma one. That is the only full credit right answer. Do you guys understand that? Okay. If it were a test or a quiz and you had time, like at the end, I would plug them back in and see if they worked. So let's do that. It takes two seconds. Negative two for x. So that would give me negative two plus that's a five times one. So what's negative two plus five? Three. Check mark, right? Do you guys see what I'm saying? I'm plugging it in without really showing it. Uh, three times negative two is what? Negative 6 minus 2 because 2 times 1. So negative 6 minus 2 more is negative 8. So it worked. That's how you can check and see if you're right. Do you guys understand? Okay, great. So let's do the next one. 43 said 9y plus 3x equals 18. And negative 3y minus x equals negative 6. Again, I don't care what method you choose. It doesn't matter. But because this x has a 1 as its coefficient, it's really pretty easy to get it um, alone with substitution. Okay? So what's the first thing I'm going to do? 
I'm going to add the 3y first. Mathematically, that's what you have to do first, right? And then what? Divide by a negative, so it's going to be 6 um, minus 3y. Or you could say negative 3y plus 6. That's the same. It doesn't matter at all. This isn't slope-intercept form or anything like that, so we don't care. Okay? So where's this going to go? It was already in the bottom one. Do you see what I'm saying? So because we solved it from the bottom, we need to go up top. So this is where you need to be super organized. So I kind of tried to like do the arrow so I remembered I was on the bottom one. So 9y plus 3x equals 18. And instead of x, I'm going to substitute a 6 minus 3y. Is that okay? If you ever accidentally plug it back into itself, you just kind of go in circles. And I think you'll notice pretty quickly that something went wrong. Okay. So 9y plus what? 18 minus 9y equals 18. Is everybody okay there? Combine like terms. So it's 9y minus 9y. So it's zero. They cancel out, right? So 18 equals 18. What just happened? The variables disappeared, right? So it's either infinitely many or it's no solution. Which one is this? Infinitely many because that was true, right? If the variables disappear, that's what I mean by that. There's no more letters anymore. Then it's either infinitely many or no solution. If it's true, it's infinitely many. If it's false, it's no solution. Okay, so, if different, like, so like if we had 2 equals 18, that's not true. That would be no solution. Does that make sense? Okay. Anybody confused? Excellent. All right, 23. This time it said solve by using elimination. Again, I don't care, but I probably would here, and you'll see why in a second. So 5a plus 15b. I capitalize my b so they don't look like a 6. Equals negative 24. Um, negative 2a minus 6b equals 28. Okay. Do any of those have a coefficient of 1? No. You totally can substitute. I always use substitution. It was easy for me. I wasn't afraid of fractions. I was pretty quick at it. I never used elimination. I don't know why I just didn't. But on this problem, I probably would. I think elimination would be a lot quicker than substitution, and most people aren't very comfortable with fractions. Okay? So, you either pick A or B. It doesn't matter. You pick one that looks easier to you. I would probably pick A because they're smaller numbers. Do you guys understand that? Okay. So we want them to be the same number so they can eliminate. So when you count by twos and you count by fives, what's the first number that they reach? Ten, right? So let's pause for a second and pretend that's not what we did. Okay. If I had chosen the Bs, what would the numbers both be? Count by six and count by 15. And what would they reach? Do you understand what I'm saying? 30, yeah. So it'd be 30. But some people, that's really hard for them. So if that happens and you don't know what numbers to pick, you can always just multiply by the other one. It's not like the best way to do it, but it'll work. So I could multiply this by 6, and I could multiply this by 15, and wouldn't they match? Right? It's just bigger, but that's totally fine. So I just want you to know that you have multiple options, but I think most of you probably want to choose the 2 and the 5. Am I right? Okay? The other thing that you want to keep in mind is opposites add right? Most people are better at addition than they are subtraction. So if these are already opposites, I want to keep it that way. If these weren't opposites, so I'm going to multiply this all by a 2 and this all by a 5, pretend they weren't opposites, I would have multiplied one of them by a negative to make them opposite. Do I, do you, you make, do I make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, great. Whenever you guys do subtraction with these, people always screw up like the third one. They always forget to subtract. So I just add. Okay? So Blah, blah, blah. Multiply the top by a 2 and the bottom by a 5. Okay? I like to go right next to it, so I kind of keep them lined up, but that's just my own personal preference. You do whatever gets you the right answer. I don't care. So on top, what do we get? Ten. 10A plus 30B mm -hmm, equals negative 48. Is everybody okay with that? All right, the second line, what do we get? Negative 10a. Hello. Minus 30B. Thank you. Minus 30b. And then 5 times 20 is 100. 5 times 8 is 40, so 140. Is that all right? After we do that, we're either going to add or we're going to subtract. So we tried to get the a's the same, and we did, right? So opposite add, opposite add, opposite add. So I put a big plus sign there so I don't forget what I was doing. 
And I actually do kind of add it in my head. I'm like, okay, does 10 plus negative 10 give me zero? Do they eliminate? Yeah, because people screw that up sometimes. What's 30 and negative 30? Zero. zero again. So I'm left with just a zero on the left. There's no letters. Do you understand that? Okay. And then what's the right side? You can use calculator if you need to. 92, very good. Is that true? No? So what's my answer? No solution. Excellent. Your final answer is no solution. So if you had chosen to multiply with the B's eliminating, well, this time it wouldn't have mattered. But sometimes you won't get the same answer I got. You might get like 0 not equals 17. It doesn't mean you did it wrong. It just means you did it differently. But your final answer of no solution is going to be the same. Okay? One more. Almost done. 54. While I'm setting it up, why don't you try to decide, like, am I going to get the A's the same, the B's the same, what am I going to multiply by? What do you guys want to eliminate, the A or the B? Someone said A, that's fine. Someone said B, that's fine. I'm going to choose B because... They're smaller numbers. It's easier for me to multiply by a 2 and a 5. And they're already opposites. So if you choose A, that's totally fine. Go ahead and do it. If you choose A, just make sure you multiply one of them by a negative so you can add. Do you guys understand that? I'm going to do B with you. If you want to do A, that's fine. Okay? So what do we multiply the top one by? 5? What about the bottom one? 2. Very good. So what's the top line become? 25A minus 10B equals no negative 95 yeah what about the second line 16a plus 10b negative 110 you guys can use a calculator I'm not gonna judge you okay so we want the B's to eliminate that was the point right am I gonna add or subtract opposite add opposite add opposite add Am I going to add or subtract? Yeah. Add, okay. So what's 25 and 16? So we got 41A. Those really do eliminate. Just kind of check that they do. And what's it equal to? Calculator. Get your calculator out. Negative 205. And so what's A then? Negative 5. Are you guys okay? Where are you going to plug that back in? Wherever you want. It doesn't matter, right? What looks easier to you guys, the top line or the bottom one? The top one looks easier to me because it's smaller numbers. It doesn't matter. There's no wrong answer there. Okay? So I always plug it into the original problem. Um, again, technically you don't have to, but why would you plug it into bigger numbers? Do you see what I'm saying? I don't think that's going to go well. So 5A minus 2b equals negative 19. So negative 25 minus 2b equals negative 19. Now what? Add the 25. So negative 2b equals what? 6. So b is negative 3. My final answer always has to look like this, an ordered pair x comma y in parentheses. But they didn't give me x comma y. So what do I do? They gave you a and b. So what do you think you should do? It's alphabetical. You always go alphabetical. So A comes before B. If they gave you S and T, you go alphabetical. It doesn't matter. So A is negative 5. B is negative 3. Final answer done. Is anybody confused at all? Is this coming back to you? Is this pretty easy for you? Okay, great.